things started going south. Watch this young grizzly bear. It's just eating grasses and flowers, berries. Kind of nice just to be in the moment and watch. And thanks for sharing windows, everybody. nice seeing two grizzly bears unfortunately one was right at the bus turnaround spot so we couldn't hike around this area as long as the bears in the area yeah it was still nice to see him through the binoculars and the camera um, at the the bus let me drop off on the way back so I'm just walking a bit on the road here maybe see some more animals otherwise just Get some steps in, enjoy the, the nice scenery. It's a bummer, it's so cloudy and rainy and cold. It's not really comfortable. It's the first bad weather I had on this trip, really, except from the beginning in the east of Canada. We had a few rains, but usually stuff where you, you could see, if you stick around for an hour or two, it would blow over, and usually the sun came back. We go out again right after. Well, this is a proper rain area. Like, it won't clear for the next few days. And apparently, it's been raining for the last couple of days. And even if it's not raining, there's a fire around, so there's smoke. And the chances of seeing Mount Denali are really small. So I think it's not worth sticking around just for the chance of it clearing up and seeing it. But it's still a really nice area, so not too bad.
of course, I leave the national park and the sun comes out. Perfect blue sky now. Great day. I guess I can't complain. I saw a couple of grizzly bears, the caribou. The landscape looked kind of nice with the clouds and everything. Maybe I can see the Renati from further down the highway or something. Behold, the mighty Denali mountain. Well, that was great yesterday, late afternoon and evening. Of course, this morning when I get to the, the viewpoint of Mount Denali, it's raining again and you can't see anything. Hi. Yeah, something is definitely wrong. The temperature keeps going up and then catches itself and goes down again. I think it's when the, the pressure cap opens and releases some pressure and then that's when the temperature goes up and when the pressure builds up again, it's going down. And... Not good, not good at all. little detour here on the Petersville Road. Basically a little back door into the Denali National Park. It's really beautiful out here. Nice scenery. Fantastic. But this but these student issues I don't wanna push it too much and get too remote. That's why I turned around here and head back to the highway now. So if I break down here, I need a towel or whatever, it's going to be really difficult because there's no phone reception, it's going to be really expensive. So yeah, not going to push it and try to keep it on a more or less safe side. But I'm going to head in the direction of Anchorage. I have to decide if I stay in Anchorage, wait for the spare parts, or if I keep going and come back to Anchorage where I have ordered some spare parts. While in Anchorage, I met up with Thomas. Thomas is another German guy. He's doing the same Pan America trip at a Land Rover Defender. It was nice to meet him again after we met in Halifax couple of months earlier. Then through luck I met Jason. Jason is another Land Rover enthusiast. He's living close to Anchorage. And he had a spare cap for my coolant reservoir, which he happily gave to me. So hopefully this is solving my issues, but let's see.
not a big fan of driving on tarmac that would be used like this. spot huh yeah, you get really close to the glaciers in the mountains here in Alaska at least at some spots I like it And then, things started going south. I stopped on the road for a quick picture, left the engine running, and as soon as I stopped driving, I could hear the gurgling sound that the engine used to make when I stopped the engine. And the, the heater stopped working and I got cold air. So this was the first, like usually these symptoms only happened when I stopped the car and stopped the engine. And apparently now they could also happen while driving, so basically this means what, every time I have to stop at the red light or stop in traffic or whatever, this is the potential for an airlock in the engine and then engine failure, so this was very serious and yeah. I decided to head back to, to Anchorage and sort this finally sort this out. So I removed the, the thermostat and then limped the car back to Anchorage. I spent another night with Thomas on the parking lot and then on the next day I headed back to Jason which offered to help me sort it out. I didn't film much in these days so these few pictures have to be enough. Sorry about that. I rented some tools from a local parts store and then we got to work. First I did a gas test on the, on the cooling system to see if there's combustion gas in the cooling system. The test was negative, so apparently no combustion gas in the cooling system, means not the head gasket. Then we pressurized the, the cooling system, see if there's a leakage of pressure somewhere internal in the engine, which would also mean the head gasket. But the, the pressure was really stable, there was a minimal decline in pressure, but that could have been due to the fixture of the pressure pump, but again it didn't. Looked like it was the head gasket. And luckily uh, another guy from the local Land Rover community showed up because he had a, a compression tester. So we could test the compression on all the cylinders, which was also good, which also means not the head gasket. 
I also replaced the water pump just on the off chance, but it didn't solve anything. So the only other idea we had is that there's a really persistent air bubble somewhere in the system that is causing steam and causing these issues. So Travis proposed that we put the car on a really steep incline and then bleed the system so the coolant cap is the highest point in the system and all the air can escape while we fill the cooling system. Gave that a try, but unfortunately didn't solve the issue. So running out of ideas, the only way forward was to take the head off and have a look at the head gasket because nobody knew what was going on or had any other ideas. Unfortunately, Jason didn't want to really do it because he's not an engine guy, but Travis offered I could set up shop at his place and we do it over there. Like I do the work and he helps me. It was a really nice offer. So we took the head off. Would you look at that? The head gasket was actually damaged in two places. In the meantime, I was also in contact with the guy in the UK that built the engine for me. And he knew of two cases that had really early head gasket failures, like in the first one and a half to 3,000 kilometers. And I also talked to Mike from Britannica Restorations up in Canada. And he also had a case of a European traveler with a head gasket failure really early on. And it turns out all of us had the head gasket from the same manufacturer. So I'm guessing it's very likely that it's like a manufacturing defect that's causing this because my engine has like 30,000 kilometers on it now. It definitely shouldn't fail this early on. And I am back on this beautiful highway. Let's see if I'll make it any further this time. I'll have to return back to Anchorage back in. But I have a good feeling. I also had to replace the cap from the coolant reservoir again. Because the cap that Jason gave me was broken also. But now the third cap seems to do the job. <laughs> 